The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. Hey guys, welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. This is Eric Sablon, and I am super excited. I actually have a lady that has crushed the network marketing space up here in Alaska. She's from a small village inside in, in rural Alaska, up there above the Arctic Circle called Buckland. And if she can build a business from Buckland, then the whole thing about, I don't know anybody, or I don't have the right people, or I don't have the right network, throw that out the window. She's a wife, she's a mother of three, and she's actually adding a new one. So there's gonna be a new one this year. She's an entrepreneur. She has a team of thousands right now. Um, she's auto bonus qualified. So guys, that means she's successful. That means she's doing something and she's continuing to build and build and build. Um, and she's a network market, marketing professional. Please welcome Alexis Savage to the show. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. I, um, you know, Eric has asked me to be on this for quite a while. And honestly, I was like, okay, I'll get back to you once I could get my eyebrows done from, you know, all this quarantine mess. So it's been, <laughs> it's been real. So I know that, you know, he supports me so much. And I was like, you know what, what the heck? It's real life. Let's get this going. Uh, doesn't matter. You know, all we want to be is real. And I really appreciate what you have to say, Eric. You know, I work really hard. Um, but really, I couldn't do any of it without customers and without, you know, a great team. So it's, you know, just having those people and the support in all other areas, which helps me to be successful. So, well, I interviewed your husband a while back, like he was number th the third episode, and he brought something about how. A supportive wife has a supportive the supportive spouse has really changed his business. He told me a story about when he you he wasn't doing the business because he didn't believe in it, and then he decided one day on a call because you kind of pulled him over and it's like I need you to jump on this call and do something. So if you guys want to hear that story, it's awesome. It's at the end of uh, episode three with Jordan Savage. So you guys got to listen to that one. But I'm just actually going to ask you, you know. Let, let me get a little bit of, about your backstory and how you, you've been an entrepreneur forever. I mean, you have a store in rural Alaska. It, so how many people are in that village that you're from? I would say about five to 600 people. Um, when, I, when I was a kid, we only had about three to four. So mm -hmm. population is rising, but not rapidly. So um, yeah, super small town. Everyone's my cousin. Everyone's my aunt or uncle. I have nieces and nephews everywhere. So just a loving place to live. So I actually work with a lot of um, villages uh, in my other job. And I noticed that. So I'm from uh, Guam. And it's kind of the same thing as everybody's related to you back home. You know, this is your auntie. You got to kiss her. This is your uncle. You got to shake his hand. This is so-and-so. So that's 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 the kind of place that she comes from. And she's grown a team of thousands so just kind of a quick backstory on how you kind of got started in network marketing. What, what was it that kind of jumped in? I mean, because I know you sell. I know you're a great salesperson. And I know you're a great uh, communicator. But what was it that like network marketing was like, boom, this makes sense to me? Awesome. So um, taking it a little bit back, you know, I didn't think I was an entrepreneur. I never thought I had that business bone in my body. You know, I went to college and I got my degree, you know, was about to work corporate and um, decided I'm not meant to be stuck in the office. That's not who I am. So my husband 
was the one that got the whole store idea going and you know we went from living here in anchorage he was in the air force um and he had this grand idea to go open the store but the problem was he was still in the air force so i went up there and i did all that um so it was a huge sacrifice on everyone's part you know not just the kids but both him and i you know we were uh, away from each other for a long time and um so i went up there went back to my hometown which was refreshing it was amazing um got reconnected with all my family again love that and so here we are just started a mom and pop store up there which was so much fun i i mean that's one of the things that i hold near and dear to my heart because it was my very first business right and so mm -hmm. Um, it gave me a lot of faith in myself. Like, dude, I started a business. It's just one of those things you never thought you would do in your life. So after that, I, it really helped me be confident. And so, um, during that time, of course I, you know, was tired. I was doing so many different things, um, being mom, being manager, lifting freight and doing all this other stuff. And so, um, you know, I came across a product and, you know, I really just was, I wanted to be a consumer. I didn't want the direct sales part of it. I just didn't right. want it. Um, I just knew that I would love the product and I did. I absolutely loved it. The problem was I could not shut up about it. Like I told everyone. And at this point I had gotten at least 25 people to join me. And I of course came in, you know, was a promoter, um, didn't really want to be, but I was making a little bit of money and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing until it got to the point where it was like, okay, this has exploded and I could <laughs> see how this could work. And so I got my husband on the product. He loved it. And so I was like, okay, I could back this product. We're going to go for it. And from there, you know, that's the opening of the direct sales, you know, and I never knew that I had that, but just a team building. I never thought that was a, um, something I had in me and something I was passionate about. And, you know, I just love helping other people not only make money, but be successful and take it, you know, above and beyond than just receiving a couple hundred dollars a month. So I want to take it back to like what you first answered, like, you went out and you built a store, but you didn't think that you had a, a business bone in your body. Like you didn't think you had the entrepreneur bone in your body. And when you built that confidence by just kind of going through what you were doing out in rural Alaska. And I want actually, because I, I work with a lot of stores like this. Can you give me the square footage of your store? <laughs> oh my gosh. It is so tiny, you guys. It's, I would say... 1100 square feet that was also the house and the <laughs> store so it's a it's different it's definitely mom and pops ish but when you have customers that come in they're coming into your house where you live mm -hmm. so totally you know cr it's just crazy so like everyone that's listening she, she basically put uh, a store inside her what we would what we would call inside her garage but it's really her living room um she put a store there and she creates a massive revenue and that's what basically got her got her started got her entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur spirit growing and then a lot of us we want to start off as we don't we have that stigma of oh this is one of those direct sales things this is network marketing this is this i love what she said in her story she became a product of the product she started talking about it like a normal person because I follow some people and all of a sudden when you decide that you're going to do it and then all of a sudden you go into this thing called techno babble and you just start talking about the product and how it does this and how it does that and how it does this. Really, all she did was, hey, it worked for me and I, I like it. You should try it. And I'm sure that's exactly how she was doing it. So guys, just remember that techno babble confuses people and a confused mind doesn't buy. Yeah, totally. Totally doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> totally doesn't. So um, we talked, uh, one thing that I, I want to talk to you about is you said you transitioned into, um, you, you were making uh, a, a good amount of money and it, it was real. So what was like, and you don't have to go dollar wise because th that, th just the feeling, tell me what the feeling was when you were like, 
network marketing. So the first check network marketing works, but what was that check? What was that feeling that you got when you were like, this really works? Like what, like, what was that feeling? What was that threshold where you're like, and it doesn't have to be a dollar amount, but intrinsically, what did you feel like? Like, like it was a weight just lifted off you, off your shoulders. I mean, what, what was it? Oh my gosh, you guys, like, you know, I just being in the company, I always heard it from other people's and, you know, I continued to work my business and that was my goal, obviously. I mean, I wanted to become debt free. I wanted to do all these things and the passion was so deep inside of me. Um, and you know, you go through dips and you rise again in this industry. And I just remember when we were, when we just made that first real climb and we hit some, some ranks that, you know, we had been pushing for, um, you know, it wasn't even when I, re when I saw the paycheck, it was when I hit that goal, you know, it was, the goal was so huge and it just felt like, you know, you, you, you were never going to get there. And when you got there, it was like, I just remember I, I was in my room, you know, just hundreds of dollars away from this goal. And I remember sitting there crying saying, I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. It's happening. Oh my God. And, you know, I, went live on Facebook and, you know, I had asked my friends to support me. I was so close and I couldn't help it. I was crying. Everyone saw it. They were like, Oh my gosh. And everyone wanted to support me, which is what is amazing. And so, um, you know, that led to obviously bigger paychecks. And, um, one of the things was, you know, I, I didn't know what I, I don't look at the comp plan. I never mm -hmm. know what I'm going to make based off my sales. That's <laughs> not the important part. The important, important part to me is changing lives. Uh, where, where it changed for us was, you know, when we got that paycheck, we get paid every Tuesday. So it's weekly. Um, that weekly check was bigger than any monthly salary I've, I've ever had. And then some, so that I was like, we could literally do, so, do a lot of things with this one week <laughs> paycheck. And I was just taken back, you know, and it was just such a blessing. And it really, like, like I said before, you know, I was confident, you know, every time you reach those little goals, you just become more confident. And that's what I love about this business is, uh, you can literally reward yourself with your own hard work and you're mm -hmm. not reliant on your, your boss to give you a raise or, you know, a thousand, a thousand percent raise is crazy in a year. So that's, that's right. the way I see it. <laughs> so when when you got that check uh, everything kind of like came through like you had this light bulb and you had this this thing that was like boom awesome you you were reinvented you've been in the industry for a number of years when you got to a point where you felt like um it was getting harder and the team was not duplicating or something like that what would be like two tips that you'd give cuz a lot of our a lot of our listeners they're in that space and they've gone to the event and then they restarted at zero zero and they got to the event and they did this and then they you know their team they built up this great team they got a great check and then it just started to, to crumble within what would you kind of what would be your uh, tips to a network marketer that's had a team built it up really nice got the check that they want hit the goals that they needed but then people started to fall back and i know everyone's like just go out there and show more people action cures everything and it does but what would be your tip that says, you know what, this is like a coaching moment. Like, I know this is where we're at. This is what I'd say to a guy that is in the same position I was in when my business started to take a step back. What, what would you say? Awesome. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I never try to portray, you know, this, this gig to be just rainbows and unicorns all the time but because it's not you know you got the those those high peaks and then you got very very deep deep valleys that are just like it's really hard to kind of feel those same emotions in the same year so to say and you know what i would tell people is you know work on that self development because that's really what's going to pull you through a lot of those dips that you're going to see um always always stay focused. You know, it's easy to hit those highs. And then when you do, 
you know, sometimes you might feel burnt out because you're not doing the self development or you're not doing mm -hmm. uh, all these things to keep um, your mind right, like working out and, you know, those sort of mm -hmm. things that really keep you going. Stay on top of all areas of your life. Try to stay um, as balanced as possible. You know, a lot of people are spiritual. A lot of people need their working out time. Self-development is huge. If you're going to spend all this money on these conference, conferences, and I'm guilty, you know, I spend so much money going to these conferences and then I get excited and pumped up and I'm going to do this and that. And then I get back and I fall back into old patterns. And it's really mm -hmm. because I haven't created a lot of the good habits in my life. And, you know, it's always a learning curve. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, you know, always remember those feelings you felt when you hit those highs and keep them, keep them near in your vision, create vision boards, look at them every day. You know, there's so much to all of this. And I, you know, years ago, I never did any of this, you know, gratitude mm -hmm. work, um, you know, being thankful, all that stuff. I never did any of that. And, you know, once I incorporated those things into my life every day, just being thankful first and foremost, to be alive. Um, mm -hmm. and having a fresh start, a new day, you know, you kind of get lost in the mix if you're not, if you're not grateful. So. Yeah. And I always tell people this, that, um, this business entrepreneur, so network marketing, entrepreneurship, all of that stuff, if you're doing it correctly, it's basically a personal development course wrapped with a conversation plan. The better you are, the better your check grows, the better you'll be able to talk to better people the better you'll be able to articulate things to better to 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 a better and wider audience. So that's that's one of the things that that I, I I always take away from it is like if I'm reading a book or I'm taking a class or I'm doing something and it's weird because in high school see student on a good day like no college I mean some college but I just kind of hung out there but see student on a good day and now I'm you know running this and and doing a business and doing some other things that you don't have to have all of that you just kind of have to have the vision and have the power and, and, and bring it in from, from here. Cause when you find something that you really love and something that you really want to change, things really start to happen. So Definitely. I'm actually going to jump in on this. Um, this is a marketing podcast. And I just want to ask you, what would be a tip that you give like someone that's, that's on the fence kind of starting out, um, so, you know, you're kind of a seasoned uh, network marketer, someone starting out that, you know, doesn't, doesn't know exactly what to do. What would be like the first two tips you'd give them? And it's kind of like an onboarding thing, something that you do to help them get to the next level, not so much the rank, but mentally in their head. Um, because in, the, in your story, you talked about once you got the confidence, things started happening. What would you do to help your person, your new person or a new person get some confidence right away? I personally, you know, I, I'm huge on um, mentoring. And, you know, mm -hmm. when I started, I felt like I joined the, a company and I wasn't, I didn't have very much mentorship, you know, and for mm -hmm. me, I think um, for anyone starting off, and this is what I do now is um, I've learned that, you know, I have to build up anybody that is going to be coming into my team, I have to set the tone for them and not mm -hmm. give false, um, you know, it's going to be just, you're going to hit the ranks and you're going to do this and that, you know, just be realistic. You know, if you're not mm -hmm. going to work, you're, you know, you're not going to see your business move. And a lot of people, right. when they sign people up they're they want, they want this, this, the promoter to jump on board, but they're giving them a lot of false hope like just too right. many rainbows and too many unicorns. And so just being real uh, with people is what I find really helps them not only to understand that it's going to be work, but to also um, let them know that I'm a real person and I'm going to help you along the way. I'm not just here to, you know, sign you up. I want you to win. Mm -hmm. And so that's number one, but you know, just, a lot of people come in with a lot of doubt already. You know, it's, it's something mm -hmm. new. And right. just having them um, connect with other people, that's, that's huge. You know, it's not just about me. I have a whole network of other people over here that have done it. And I try to connect them with those people to say, hey, I know you saw me, but here's hundreds of other people that I can connect you with. And so um, that's what I do. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm just a 
person at the end of the day, one person, but, um, you know, just be years and years doing, doing this, I've done it wrong. I've done it, you know, halfway right. And then there's definitely a better way to do it. And I've found that it's just by being real and connecting people right. with other people, you know, not being misknow it all. So, mm -hmm. And that's, that's, uh, I like what you said there, because one thing that, uh, that, that, that she said was set realistic expectations. Like if you work, you're going to get paid. If you don't work, you're not going to, it's just like going in and clocking in, you're not going to get paid. But then one thing that she said was, I always tell people that your net worth is, your net work is your net worth. So the more people you know, the better people you know, if you're out there actually looking to meet people and create a bigger and a greater circle, of people that you hang out with, then your business will grow guaranteed because you're talking to newer people, you're getting better ideas. So, and that's one thing that I really like what she said was she likes to introduce the new people to, and it's not, it's cliche that some people are like, well, just introduce them to your upline. No, she wants to introduce them to the network, like get them involved mm -hmm. in the team. So get them into the culture. So I'm actually gonna go to this next question. I love asking this question. You've been in network marketing for multiple years. What would be, before you clicked on the button, before you said, I'm going to be a promoter, before you um, signed the deal that says, I'm going to go share this in, and, and you kind of did it a different way. You kind of shared it before you actually were the promoter, but what would you have done right when you started, before you clicked on, yes, I'm going to be a promoter, what would you have done? What would you have told yourself that would have increased the speed of your business today? Oh, man. So, you know, when I first started in this first, I'll just give you a scenario of two different ways I started because I just started in another company and it's been amazing. Um, so I started with, you know, this health and wellness company and, you know, saw great success, but I started and I was halfway in when I started, mm. kind of like, uh, I love it. I'm telling people about it, but I'm not sure. I don't want to be a part of a pyramid scheme. Um, and I just, I didn't want any of that. And so I think um, if I had went guns blazing in the beginning, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, okay, now starting in this other company, you know, I saw the opportunity before I saw the product. And I mm. knew that this was, I know, I already know, you know, it, it could go one of two ways. And if it goes the right way, it's going to be amazing. So it was mm -hmm. really um, okay opportunity. And this time I'm in the beauty industry and it's a total, it's different, totally different. Mm -hmm. um, but I went guns blazing. I went like, okay, um, there's nothing that's going to stop me. Um, speed, of, speed of the leader determines the speed, of, speed of the pack. And so I was like, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to try this totally different scenario, totally, totally different. different. So, you know, just come in, and be on fire every day wake up and just do your listen to something motivational be motivated motivated again and i'm not gonna lie i i went on a couple months stint of just not really wanting to run my business and mm -hmm. now i'm fired up again you know i'm up i'm ready to go and i just love that feeling just whatever it takes for you to stay motivated to stay on fire um, and run your business is what you need to do, whatever it takes, just to get up and just right. want to do it. <clears throat> right. And, and that's one thing that uh, most entrepreneurs and most network marketers have a problem with. It's like, they're not, they don't have a boss. So it's like, they're not, they can't clock in. They don't have to do that. And like their business will dip. And I learned this mm -hmm. a long time ago, your business dips, not from what you didn't do yesterday. It's from what you didn't do three weeks ago because your pipeline is not full anymore. And like what Alexa said is she hit the pipeline and plugged it up. Like it's, it needs some Drano cause it's going like the, the funnel is full. Stuff's just dripping out of the bottom. So she literally rocked that house. So, um, so I, you talked about you're currently working on something. So what I'm going to do is I always make a, a landing page for all of my guests. So I'm actually gonna make a, a landing page for you and it'll link to your Facebook and then it'll link to the mini chat that I made for you. So, <laughs> so I made a mini chat for her. So it'll link to a mini chat. So it's going to be www.burnphonemarketing.com forward slash Alexis. And I'll put that in the show notes for everybody. You want to meet with her. You want to connect with her because she has some 
skill sets that will blow your mind. She's like, I mean, literally some of the stuff she posts on Facebook, I'm like, wow, boom. I'm, I'm excited now. I'm motivated. I'm mo super motivated. <laughs> so yeah, I'll do that for you. I always make that. I always do that um, for all my guests. So the last question I have is I want you to think of a big stage. I want you to think of a giant stage. You're, so you're at a company convention or a big, whatever um, your biggest stage looks like. You just got done with your presentation. And I want you to put the mic drop phrase. So there's 100,000 people, 200,000 people, 300,000 people God, that walking, <laughs> walking out of the state, walking out of the stadium. And you were the keynote. They stand up from the chair, they turn around, they're walking out the doors. What's the one phrase, the one phrase that you want that whole 100,000 people to remember Alexis Savage by? That's a hard one. Mm. You know, for me, um, I'm very spiritual. Mm -hmm. and, but second to that, I'm all about family. You know, I'm all mm -hmm. about uh, allowing my family to live a life that I never have, have you know, I, mm -hmm. I never had. And so, you know, growing up in a small town, um, just the sky's the limit. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just a tiny small town girl. And I think what I, what I want to portray, what I would, what I will portray when I'm on that stage and I'm a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Sky is the limit. Always believe in yourself. Trust the process and never give up. Those are some of the things that I've struggled with. But at the longer I'm in, I start to believe in it more. Believe and everything that, you know, all that motivational speaking type stuff every year, it just instilled in me more. And I really found that those are the, those are the key things that I want to stand by is, you know, family, believe in yourself, sky's the limit and don't give up. Right. So yeah, the sky's the limit. And, and most people literally will put a glass lid on what they're doing. Like they yeah. have that crab syndrome, they will put a glass lid. So just remember that like the sky's the limit and literally trust the process because if you're trusting the process that everything works correctly when it's done and the foundation and the framework is correct exactly. so oh, i like that you said that eric one second you said a lot of people put that glass top on and i'm one of those people that did that you know you have to break through a lot of those um self-limiting thoughts that you mm -hmm. you just got to break them off of you because you get so close to winning and then you kind of just reel back and you're like, oh, I don't, you know, and it's, you have to understand that that's what's happening and um, break those off. You know, the sooner you mm -hmm. break those off, this, the better. I'm still working on it. It's just that I'm going to have to deal with the rest of my life. But I like that you say that because I, that's something that I've, I've struggled with, you know, for years. So you guys, people at the top still struggle. So just so you know, their struggle might not be your same struggle, but she's already at the top of her game or at the top of where she wanted to be. And she put a glass ceiling. And what's funny is a lot of people, once they break through that glass ceiling, it's like this big cloud, this big thing just opens up. Like the skies open up. And like she said, the sky's the limit. So just keep pounding, keep pounding on and literally read a good book. If you feel like you're hitting that glass ceiling, because a good book will take you a long way. So thank you, Alexis, for jumping on, guys. Always, always, always remember to listen to the full outro. I'm giving away some awesome stuff. So make sure you listen to the full outro. It's going to be, uh, I'm not even, I'm not even going to spoil it. You guys just listen to the full outro and pick up the free thing. And also, we're actually going to put in the show notes, www.burnfulmarketing.com forward slash Alexis. So you can get Alexis's offer and connect with her on Facebook. So Alexis, thank you for your time. I appreciate you finally coming on the show. Um, the hair looks great. The lashes look awesome. The eyebrows are on point. You're there. <laughs> thank you so much, Eric, for having me. I appreciate it. I just admire all the hard work you put into this. And, you know, I was nervous, but it, I'm more motivated than ever. So I appreciate you taking the time to interview me. No problem, guys. And always, guys, I will see you on your next episode of Burn Phone Marketing Radio. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.
Are you tired of not getting Facebook interactions on your posts? Or if you do, it's people that are already on your team or people that are already in your business? Well, we've solved that problem. We created a system that helps you generate leads on autopilot, climb ranks, promote your services, sell more products, and become a leader effortlessly without spamming your friends and family ever. So take our free five-day course, go to www.burntphonebots.com and click the link and we will see you on the other side. Again, that's www.burntphonebots.com. All right, guys, see you on the training.